Hey everyone, with Battlegrounds coming out in WoW Classic, in this video, I'm going to cover 10 ways you can prepare for them. Don't forget that I have timestamps listed in the description of this video, so feel free to use those so you could skip around if you so desire. Let's get right into it with number 1. Find out how to queue. With our version of WoW Classic, we will fortunately be able to queue from Battle Masters in any major city. If you're unsure of their location, you could ask a guard and they'll direct you to your own specific Battle Master. However, if you so desire, you could queue up from the Battleground's original location out in the open world. For Alterac Valley, the instance entrance, as well as the quest givers, are out in the Alterac Mountains. Here's the spot for the Alliance, the faction known as the Stormpike Guard, and here's where the Horde can visit the Frostwolf Clan. Just like AV, Warsong Gulch has two reputations depending on your faction, the Silverwing Sentinels for Alliance, and the Warsong Outriders for Horde. Ileana Moonblaze is the Quartermaster for Alliance, and she could be found right at this location in Ashenvale. Kelm Hargunth is the Quartermaster for the Horde, and could be found here in the Barrens. Number 2. Familiarize yourself with the objectives. Capture the Flag is the objective of Warsong Gulch, and is a common task you'll find in many games, dating back for many years. Your team must capture your enemy's flag by fighting your way into your enemy's base, grab their flag, and return it to your base, all while your flag remains intact. If you return to your base while your enemy has your flag, you cannot score a point until your flag is returned to your base. The first team to capture the flag three times wins. There is no time limit, as there is in Retail WoW, so these games will only end once three flag caps have occurred. As for Alterac Valley, the end goal is to kill your opposing faction's leader. Drek'thar for the Horde, or Vandar Stormpike for the Alliance. There are way more nuances than just that, but the game of AV itself will not end until this has occurred. There are tactics to help you along the way, of course, like destroying towers, capturing graveyards, turning in armor scraps, etc, etc. But I highly recommend you familiarize yourself with all of the ins and outs before diving in. Number 3. Figure out what role you play. Once you understand the objective of each battleground, I recommend you figure out what specific role your particular class will play in it. For example, druids are the best flag carriers for Warsong Gulch. Are you a druid? Then you bet that you better be trying to carry that flag for your team. So you should assess the strengths and weaknesses of your class and how that applies to PvP. For example, hunters and rogues are great for defense. Hunters can apply various traps and flares to help detect and slow down enemies attempting to infiltrate your base. Likewise, rogues could stay stealth, apply slowing potions, sap, gouge, blind, sprint after opponents, and much more. Priests have a cool ability called Mind Vision. Not sure where your opponent is hiding with the flag? Have a priest cast Mind Vision to scout it out. Shamans are extremely powerful with their plethora of totems, Tremor, Earthbind, Wind Fury, and Purge is crazy for PvP as well. There's nothing more annoying to me than having a shaman purge away all my buffs. These are just a few examples, but I recommend familiarizing yourself with how your particular class can help fill a role to bring your team to victory. Number 4. Familiarize yourself with any quests. There are a few quests associated with each battleground that will help you in terms of gaining reputation and rewards. I made an overview of all of the personal Alterac Valley quests that you could check out, and that may help you determine what battleground you want to focus more on first. For me personally, I love the Exalted rewards with Alterac Valley, and from what people have told me, as a human, I could grind to Exalted pretty quickly, so we'll see. Either way, completing quests will only benefit your character, so check out those reputation rewards and see what you'd like to go for. Also keep in mind that Honor Weekends will happen too, where you can gain a lot more honor and reputation for each uh, battleground. Number 5. Consumable Prep Work so, I'm sure you've seen this over and over again in every How to Prepare for World PvP video, so I'm not going to spend too much time on this, but obligatory mention of how important consumables are. Free action potions, limited invulnerability potion, etc, etc. One thing I want to point out is that once you obtain friendly and honored reputation with either your Alterac Valley or Warsong Gulch faction, your Quartermaster will sell you some handy consumables at not too expensive of a cost. So keep that in mind, you could snag 5 superior healing and or mana pots for 5 silver each at friendly, and at honored, 9 silver for a stack of 5 major healing and mana. You could also purchase food, water, and bandages. Do keep in mind, however, that these are only usable within the battleground, so don't expect to use it in world PvP. I've certainly made that mistake before. Number 6. Professions. Engineering. Like consumables, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel here as there are countless videos and guides already out there urging you to learn engineering for PvP. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time on this topic, but it did come to mind when I was creating this list, and I felt like I couldn't leave it out. 
Engineering just has so much of an edge in PvP combat, whether it be world PvP or inside a battleground. Grenades, sapper charges, speed boosts, the cloaking device, elemental damage reflectors, there are just too many to name. But if you're looking to be serious with PvP, I highly recommend you pick up engineering and start gathering your explosives, trinkets, and more. Number 7, PvP Gear. PvP gear is going to be super important when engaging in combat. Familiarize yourself with what gear best suits your class and role. For example, I play a paladin. Inside Molten Core, I could wear all the cloth armor I want. But in a battleground, if you see a paladin wearing a dress, that's going to raise a red flag. There's nothing mightier than a paladin in full plate in the midst of a huge battle, helping push your team to victory. That being said, armor value is important, and stamina is an excellent stat to have. After all, the more stamina, the more health you have. So if you're trying to choose between two pieces of gear, you probably want to choose the piece that has more stamina. There are of course exceptions to this, but as a rule of thumb, this stat is extremely important. PvP combat can be all about burst damage, so if you have really low defenses, health, armor, etc., you could bet that you'll be a huge target. This just makes me think about Alterac Valley. It seems like the enemy team always focuses on cloth users first. And if you're a cloth user under level 60, you can bet that rogues are going to be sneaking up trying to one-shot you. So these are all things to take into consideration. Survivability is huge for battlegrounds. Living means completing objectives. Completing objectives means victory. Number 8, Enchantments. And to piggyback off the PvP gear point, make sure your gear is enchanted properly. For those lacking stamina, you'll want the stamina enchants on your bracer, shield, even the lesser Arcanum of Constitution for 100 hit points to leg and helm from a Librum of Constitution. I know the mats could be costly to get, so I just wanted to throw that out there for you. Movement speed buffs are also super important. You can enchant your boots to increase your run speed to help you gain an edge in trying to catch somebody trying to run away. Alternatively, you could keep a separate pair for mithril spurs, which will add to your mount speed. People often keep different sets of gear for different situations. One for mount speed, one for resistances, one for PvP, PvE, etc. Do your research and see what enchants are out there for each piece of gear, and assess what will work best for what you're trying to do. Number 9, Epic Mount. I know this is way easier said than done, but having an epic mount gives you an incredible edge over somebody who does not. I know they're expensive, but there are many gold farming guides out there that can help you earn in-game gold. Dire Mall East Jump Runs, Righteous Orb Runs in Live Stratholme, Farming Gathering Professions, although some may be difficult with all the world PvP going on right now, Solo Farming if your class is able to, and so much more. So just saying, epic mounts are incredible for PvP and Battlegrounds. You just have to really put in the time to grind the gold for it. Think about it, in Alterac Valley, if one of your towers or graveyards, for example, are in trouble, you'll want to hurry back to aid your team as quickly as possible. Having a non-epic mount will only, no pun intended, slow you down. Number 10, add-ons. And last but not least, add-ons could be a vital component to your success in Battlegrounds. There are a few that I recommend. One is capping Battleground timers. I used to use this all the time back in the day. It keeps track of towers and graveyards and all that inside battlegrounds. Extremely helpful. There's also classic cast bars to see what your enemy is casting, trinket swapper to help you manage all your engineering trinkets, swing timer, dismounter, so many available. One way you could filter out and see which works best for you, using CurseForge as an example, select their PvP category and choose battlegrounds, and it'll filter the results pertaining to battlegrounds. Really good stuff there, and I recommend grabbing a few and making sure they're all installed, updated, and good to go before the battlegrounds drop. Alright, I know I said this would be a top 10 video, but I got a bonus one for you guys. All this talk about PvP and Battlegrounds really makes me think about Twinks. No, not those kind. A Twink in World of Warcraft is a non-max level character who remains a specific level for a PvP bracket and collects the best in-slot gear. A popular Twink level is 19, although some players aim to go higher, 29, 39, 49, etc, etc. The reason players stop at a level ending in 9 is so that they are at the top of their PvP bracket, which are as follows. For Alterac Valley, only players 51 to 60 can enter, but for Warsong Gulch, the level brackets are 10 to 19, 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and 60. And Arathi Basin's brackets, when that comes out, are 20 to 29, 30 to 39, 40 to 49, 50 to 59, and 60. There are a few reasons I bring this up. To make you aware, in case you'd like to create your own Twink character, maybe you found some Twink gear that you've been holding onto in your bank, or maybe you've been saving up gold to create a Twink. And another reason is, in the event that you may be saving Twink gear in your bank, 
Once Battlegrounds are released, the cost of these may very well go up. I foresee Twinks rising in popularity once the Battlegrounds are released, so there's a good chance those Twink items you've been saving up will be worth a lot more. Just something to keep in mind. So that does it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and got some useful information from it. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to hit the sub button to show your support, and let me know what you think in the comment section below. You could also follow my livestream at QuissyTV on Twitch, and QuissyTV on Twitter as well. Thanks so much for watching, good luck in Battlegrounds, and we'll see you soon.